Vinny Physics here. Next I'm going to show you key parts of the Mythbusters episode where uh, Jamie and Adam work really hard to try to get the experiment straight. For example, making sure the gun is fired level, making sure the bullet from the fired gun and the bullet drop at the same time. Um, they also go indoors to make sure uh, they can rule out uh, crosswinds, which obviously would affect the trajectory of the bullet. So let's take a look. And down by the shores of old San Francisco Bay, they've got one. Ah, oh, look at that. It's magnificent. I love these old military buildings. The historic 480-foot long Big Event Bettymuth Fort Mason Center. Fort Mason Center is perfect for us for several reasons. At over 480 feet long, there's plenty of room for a fired bullet to come to rest. And because it's enclosed, there's no wind to worry about affecting our bullet. And then lastly, it's perfectly level. So with the gun rest in place at one end of the room, Adam's first job is to make sure it's exactly 36 inches off the floor. And firing level. I'm going to fire a bullet to that target 20 feet away. Now, within that 20 feet, the bullet's not going to drop at all. So as long as the bullet hole in that target is the exact same height off the ground as the barrel, I know I've got a perfectly level bullet. Seating the gun rest. Firing in three, two, one. Dude, I'd say that is absolutely perfect. Right on our laser line. That gun's firing level. Works for me. With the fired bullet rig sorted for now, Jamie rolls out the other half of the experiment. This is my bullet. Okay, so that was the fired level test. Did he get that right? We'll come back and examine that in great detail in my uh, third video. But let's move on. So that was the fired level test. The next test they do is to ensure that the bullet dropped and the bullet fired, that they occur at the same time. Um, they spend quite a bit of time on this, but they eventually get that right. Let's just kind of go to the end of that part of the experiment. He adds a small metal clip to the trigger to delay the gun the minuscule milliseconds needed to match the solenoid. Everything's hot. Let's do it. And after a few test fires, and a bit of fine tuning, it works. Oh, it's good. It's good. It's one third of a millisecond difference. Wow. That's freaking perfect. Let's go do this little scat. Okay. Okay, so that was some remarkable engineering. They were able to construct an apparatus so the drop bullet and the fire bullet. The time difference was only a third of a millisecond, so fantastic job. So let's go to the last part of this where they feel that they have a, a, a well-constructed apparatus and, uh, and see what happens. All right, Jake, you ready to do this for real? I think we'll hit it on the first shot. Really? Oh, yeah. Ha <laughs> ha! You never make predictions. That's awesome. Bullet drop versus fire. In three, two, one. hoping this time that the bullet is as well placed as Jamie's optimism. But from 360 feet away, the boys can't see exactly where the fired bullet landed. Let's go see where it hit. So Adam takes a one-wheeled ride down the room to check out the drop zone. <laughs> wow. And the results are simply ripping. Can't get much closer than that. Ugh. I can't wait to see the high speed. So, dude, this bullet carved a streak right under the drop zone. I think this might be the shot we've been looking for. In real time, it's impossible to tell what happened. Until Adam analyzes the high speed and crunches the numbers. 677 minus 3915 equals 238 divided by 6. <laughs> Dude, the difference is 39.6 milliseconds. Which means 
because it's less than the detail I can make out. So after days of brain teasing tests, the Mythbusters can claim a world first for themselves. And a victory for physics. Let me put 39.6 milliseconds into some perspective for you. When you go to the movies and watch a projected celluloid film on the screen, you know that that film's made up of individual images, right? What you might not have known is that it takes 24 of those per second to make up the film that you're watching. So each one is on screen for exactly 1 24th of a second, but you don't notice that because it's faster than your eye can register. Well, that 1 24th of a second is actually longer than 39.6 milliseconds. That's how close those two bullets were. Two bullets, one drop, one fire. Amazingly, they ended up in the same place at the same time. Okay, so they didn't end up in the same place at the same time, but almost 39.6 millisecond difference in time between uh, the drop bullet and the fire bullet. But is that sufficient to support the myth that they hit at the same time? So I'm going to discuss that in more detail. Next, I'm going to show you a model I developed based on widely accepted physics theory, which I then use to predict the time difference between the drop bullet and the fire bullet uh, using the assumptions they used in this experiment. Take a look at the difference from the model and then compare it to the difference they got and, um, and see, is it uh, credible or is it proper to support the myth that they hit at the same time? So next I will discuss the physics model I developed for modeling a bullet fired in air. Okay, previously I demonstrated a model uh, where there is no air, but this is quite a bit more complex. Okay, so previously I mentioned uh, the forces acting on the bullet when, when there is no air is gravity, but now we have air, and air exerts a force on objects. You know this by sticking your hand out the window when you're driving in your car. The faster you go, the greater that force of air you feel on your hand. Um, remarkably, we have an equation for that. And it's a constant times velocity squared. So the greater the velocity, the greater the force due to the air. Okay, now what's the direction of that force? Well, it's perpendicular to the direction of travel. Okay? And it's in the direction opposite. And that makes sense. It's slowing things down. Okay, so more precisely, previously I showed you these two equations. Uh, where there is no air, and we didn't have this term, and we only had gravity for the y, for the y direction. So this is, I mentioned k times velocity squared, k is some constant. Well that constant is d cosine of the horizontal angle, the angle to the horizontal, okay? And that changes with time, okay? Uh, d is uh, one half the drag coefficient times the air density times the cross-section area of the projectile. Uh, this is the angle to the horizontal, and um, this is what I basically put into a computer um, using Excel, but I also used uh, Mathematica, so I got two different results, and they're very much uh, in line with each other. There's, there's no material difference between the two, and here's what I got. For the fire bullet, I got a time to cover three feet of 0.4387 seconds, and for the drop bullet, I got a time of 0.4320 seconds. So based on physics theory, there should be a difference. Uh, on the moon, the models I pre previously presented showed no difference. This shows a difference. Um, these are some of the parameters I input to my model. So drag coefficient. Uh, acceptable range, 0.1 to 0.3, I use 0.2. Air density at sea level, 1.225 kilograms per cubic meter. The diameter of a 45 caliber bullet, 0 0.011481 meters. And the mass of a 45 caliber bullet is 0 0.015 kilograms. Okay. Launch velocity, 262 meters per second. Launch angle is zero, so horizontal fire. Okay. Um, the launch velocity for a bullet for a 45 caliber bullet, it ranges anywhere from something like 700 feet per second to 1300 feet per second. 
I went ahead and used 262 because this is the velocity that gave me a horizontal distance of 360 feet, which is what uh, the, the Mythbusters got uh, from their experiment. Why is there a difference? This is what it looks like graphically. Okay, so the blue is the bullet fired, the red is the bullet dropped. Okay? Uh, this is time versus vertical position. So what does the math tell us? I'm going to focus on this mathematical equation. Okay, and this is the expression for drag in the uh, y direction. We only care about the y direction, right? The time it takes to fall vertical. Okay, well let's start with the drop bullet. Okay, uh, this is the term that slows things down. Okay, so the bigger this term, the more it will slow the bullet down. So for a drop bullet, V consists of the velocity in the X direction squared plus the velocity in the Y direction squared. Okay? Well, for the drop bullet, there is no velocity in the X direction. So this term is going to be less for the drop bullet. For the fire bullet, this number is really big, right? 262 meters per second. So this term for the fire bullet is going to be much larger. The fired bullet will experience a much greater drag in the y direction uh, due to its initial velocity in the x direction. So this shows mathematically that's what we would expect. We would expect there to be a time difference and we would expect the fired bullet to take longer to hit the ground than the drop bullet. In my next video I'm going to discuss why there is a difference between the Mythbusters experiment and their time difference of 39.6 milliseconds and the time difference I got from a widely accepted physical model of 6.7 milliseconds. From that discussion, I will present a case for where I think they really got it wrong. And um, also I will go into a little bit more detail about my physical model. So join me for that next video. Thanks for watching.